Hi, I'm Dad the Engineer. Today I'll cover how you can get to 100% internet connectivity uptime even if you don't want to pay for a second internet connection. Before I get to that, I'm going to ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would help me a lot and I greatly appreciate the gesture. To back up for a second, I recently published a pretty popular video on zero downtime internet connectivity. Well, popular for me anyway. If you haven't seen it, you may want to, as this video builds on the concepts introduced in that one. The link should be in the top right corner and in the video description below. It seems that reliable internet connectivity is definitely a quality of life item, and that people are definitely interested in it. I even neglected to mention an entire group of use cases for 100% internet uptime, health and safety. Whether it's checking in on your kids or making sure that your self-monitored security system is never down, there could be a lot riding on your internet access. Even when the stakes are high, interest can wane when the cost element is considered. That makes sense. After all, you're already paying for one internet connection which you likely expect to be reliable by itself. The prospect of paying for a second connection, whether it's load balancing or waiting as a failover backup, can be just a bit too much to bear. Okay, so you don't want to pay an additional recurring charge to improve your internet connection uptime and reliability. Is there anything you can do to improve your situation that's cheaper? Why yes. Well, maybe. It depends. It may come down to whether or not you're popular. If you have a neighbor that you get along with and you have different internet connectivity providers, you can each supply a wide area network option, also known as a WAN, to the other. Though it would be convenient, you don't have to be next door to each other. The main thing is that you need line of sight, but even that can be between poles at each property and not necessarily the houses themselves. To these poles, or to the side of your house or apartment, you will mount a wireless bridge. If you watched my video on wireless Ethernet bridges, these devices have some similarities. Generally, wireless bridges are meant to connect a distant device or network to a different network. Distant, in this case, can mean up to 5 kilometers. There are generally two units, with one at each location. You could connect a barn, shop, or guest house to your home network. It's pretty inexpensive, it's reliable, and it doesn't require you to bury any Cat5 cable or fiber. But imagine that the two points were on different properties. You have cable internet, while your friend a few houses down has Starlink. Neither of you are going to switch providers or get an extra connection, but you both would like some redundancy. You both could get wireless bridge sets and multi-WAN routers. A bridge set is as little as $70 and a multi-WAN router can be had for $45. The overall idea is that you can bridge the local area network, also known as a LAN, from each residence to the backup WAN input at the other residence. Here are some things that you should know about this. Technically, this is a violation of your agreement with your internet service provider. Maybe. You see, you aren't supposed to resell your connection, which you aren't, Depending on your terms of service, you're not supposed to share it either. Oh well. The thing is that the two networks aren't really separated. If it is a violation of the terms of service, your provider won't have any means to detect it, so you will be fine. You shouldn't look at this as an opportunity to load balance. The bridge connection may be fast, but it is subject to double NAT. Double NAT isn't desirable as it can affect the speed and latency of the connection. That said, as long as you're using the bridged connection as your failover backup, you probably won't notice. This requires a bit of trust. You see, part of this is that you and your friend plug the received bridge into the backup WAN ports. If either of you plugged it into your LAN instead, you could have all kinds of problems, including DHCP server conflicts and seeing devices on each other's LANs. You don't have to leave everything up to trust though. Depending on your equipment, you could relegate your friend to a VLAN where they do have internet access but don't have the ability to see your other devices. Some routers also allow you to set up bandwidth limits for devices on that VLAN. Bandwidth limits may be a good idea because a connection that seems fast when your household is using it may feel much slower in the hopefully rare instances when two households are using that same connection. If you and your friend have internet connections that are affected by the same factors, like power outages, you may not achieve much better uptime. However, if one of you has a terrestrial option, like fiber or cable, and the other has a wireless option, like satellite or cellular, you're probably in good shape. If all of this sounds complicated, I can assure you that it's not. You're basically replacing a cable with a bridge set, or more accurately, two cables with two bridge sets. 
The mechanical installation may be a bit of a pain, but you can get the equipment you need for as little as $70 if you already have a multi-WAN capable router. If not, your entry fee is still under $120. Considering the alternative is getting your own secondary internet connection along with whatever equipment and recurring charges are involved with it, this is a really cheap option. If you found this video to be helpful and would like to see more like it, please like and subscribe. I'm just getting this thing started and I could really use your help. If you would like to contribute some feedback, please engage with me in the comments below. If, like me, you're a little old school, please check out my website, linked in my bio. Thanks and have an awesome day.